Um, so starting, um, I guess, more meta, more big. Um, it's my fundamental belief that we have to turn the essential crisis of our age into opportunities. How do we change, how do we take the ecological crisis and make that an opportunity? How do we take the, the crisis of capitalism and make that an opportunity? How do we take the, the, the challenge, you know, the kind of the fragmentation, some of the breakdown that we see in the, the nation state system as an opportunity? The right sees these as opportunities um, and are seizing them, and I think we have to up our game and also see them as opportunities in season. Now, there's a tremendous amount of, um, I think, fear and angst in this period, and rightfully so. Because if, if we don't kind of get our S together, we all know what's kind of lurking in the wings. And they have more resources than we do. They have more control over the, all the different means and institutions of, of, of sanctioned violence uh, throughout the globe than we do. But they're losing legitimacy rapidly. They're losing their own unity rapidly. Their own center and their own kind of consensus is, is fragmenting and breaking apart. I think we see that throughout the globe. I think we definitely see it here in, in this presidential election or selection, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, it, it's, it's not just that for those people who kind of think that Trump is either a brilliant strategist or a fool, it's, he's there in part because of this crisis. Because the forces that he represents represent a small kind of insurgency on an element of the right, and they don't have their, their act together. They don't have a long-term vision or a long-term plan. So we now have the opportunity, I think, to seize the initiative if we get our act together and come with a vision and a plan, but it requires us, I think, to dig a little bit more deeper, find more points of unity and common ground, do some more deliberate coordination and planning with each other, which I think is hard, something that particularly here in the United States, I don't think we have that much real experience about to, to experience with, to be honest. And what do I mean by that? So for all of us who are like doing some form of solidarity economy work, say cooperative work, how much actual, either on a regional level or a local level, regional level, or a national level, are we doing direct exchanges, trading amongst each other? And let's be honest, we know it's not that much. But how are we going to scale up you know, the social and solidarity economy unless we start doing some more deliberate planning and integration amongst each other to get to that point? The only thing I think to a certain extent stopping us, to be honest, it is a question of resources. I'm not trying to downplay that. But I think there's also kind of an imagination gap. And with that, there's also a gap of the will. Right? Do we have the will to step up and do it? and figure out ways to do more of the solidarity aspect of it when the resources are not present and available, or we can't capture them, or somebody who has some money is not willing to be nice to us and give us some to, to use, how do we still make it happen? Like that is the ultimate thing that we still have to figure out with the limited resources that we have and, and, and put to execution and be very deliberate and strategic about it. So I see this time as kind of just distressing and troubling as it is, as a tremendous time. I'm glad I'm, I'm still alive to be here and to be present in the midst of all this confusion because it means that there's more opportunity now for us to actually change it because their institutions of control are weakening, yeah. right? And we have to see it in that way. If we don't see it in that way, then we just see the kind of the trouble, but we don't see the opportunity. So I, that's just kind of my, my challenge. It doesn't mean that, that I would sit here and present to you a lot of solutions. Uh, I am someone who sits, and most of my mental time is, is kind of focused on two things. A, how to ensure, you know, in this area of disposability for a large number of people, but particularly black people, how are we going to survive and come out the other end of this thriving and free? That's what part of my mind is, is, is kind of focused on. And the other part is kind of focused on how to make sure that my children and grandchildren 
live in a world that's actually better than the world I live in. And it has to be here in some productive fashion for that to happen. So I have a, we have a tremendous amount of responsibility to address the ecological crisis and this extension crisis that we are confronting right now. And we have more power than I think we give ourselves credit. We just don't have the, the political vision, the political unity, and I think in some part yet the political will uh, and the international relations, I think, to pull it off. But I think there's more desire to do it now than it existed in a long time. And I think that's what we need to, to see and look at. And like if you look at um, what's going on with what happened with Bernie Sanders, whatever your opinion of that is, whatever way you line up in that, and I think most people here are progressive people, that demonstrated that there's a hunger for progressive solutions more so than anything else. And it's up to us to figure out if we're going to let that opportunity slide just because he may stay in one camp or not another camp, or are we going to figure out some way to organize those people who responded to that call and put them in some active motion. So I think that's the challenge for us. <laughs>